in this video today, we're going to talk about pelvic pressure down there. You may be feeling this pressure, vaginally heaviness, sagging at the end of the day, and you're not pregnant, but you're dealing with this. What is going on? This video is just for you. My name is Heather Marr and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist. I'm passionate about helping women take one simple step from pain, confusion, and fear to confidence, relief, and freedom. This place is just for you and I want to continue to explain pelvic organ prolapse or pelvic pressure. I'm going to give you three things that you can do to be aware of as well as the whys and what's happening with pelvic pressure and as a bonus, how can you relieve some of that pressure right now, today? Pelvic pressure down here can happen for a variety of reasons. About 50% of women who have had a baby will have pelvic organ prolapse sometime in their life. What is pelvic organ prolapse? Well, the bladder, the uterus, or the rectum can fall vaginally downwards to the vaginal cavity and even past the vaginal opening or the introitus. This is called pelvic organ prolapse. We grade it by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 as demonstrated by this picture. Grade 0 is no movement of these internal organs. Grade 1 is a slight downward movement. 2 is to the vaginal opening or the introitus or a little bit more. You may have seen a bulge or it may have come out. 3 is outside of the vaginal opening and 4 is the maximum descent. Again, if you're using a mirror and you're looking down there or you feel or you have a vaginal fullness, this could be pelvic organ prolapse. Again, if the bladder drops vaginally, that's called a cystocele. The uterus dropping, that's the uterine prolapse. And if the rectum falls vaginally, that's a rectocele. Again, not that you're broken, you just need a little bit of help. Subcoordination of the pelvic floor muscles. Strengthening the pelvic floor muscles, seeing a pelvic floor physical therapist can be very beneficial. A lot of women have seen great benefits. So what are three things that you can watch for? One, intra-abdominal pressure. When I talk about this, pretend that this area is like a balloon. And if you lift or you strain, you can feel downward pressure because the intra-abdominal pressure is heavy and it's more than what the pelvic floor muscles are supporting. The result could be your pelvic organ prolapse. So being aware of that, instead of just valsalva pushing down, you're thinking about, okay, I've got to breathe in, exhale, zip up, pelvic floor contraction and lower abdominals. We've got to zip up like a tight pair of blue jeans. Tighten, zip up from the pelvic floor and the lower abdominals. It's not holding our breath, it's breathing and coordination. Second thing that you wanna do is avoid constipation. If we have intra-abdominal pressure and then we have constipation, we're bearing down and that can put pressure on the bladder, uterus, or rectum, and that can be more downward pressure or more stretching. So we wanna avoid that. Easy things to do is drink a cup of hot water in the morning, make sure that your fiber content is 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day, using a squatty potty. And again, check out this other video on constipation as well, because there's some very important tips. Number three that you wanna be aware of is taking breaks. I've heard women say, oh, about three o'clock, I get this heaviness, a sagging in the vaginal area. Take a break, take a rest, get off your feet, even for five minutes, and that should give you a little bit of a break. Now, as a bonus tip, getting into this position where you're laying on your back, put your feet up on the wall, put a pillow underneath your butt, and have gravity help support and help these internal structures return to the correct position. This has provided a lot of women a lot of relief. So where do you take it from here? You've got the symptoms, you need help. Seeing your urologist, your OBGYN, and your pelvic floor physical therapist is so important. They can provide treatment options. A lot of treatments are pelvic floor PT, as well as a pessary, which is a uh, rubber silicone device that is fitted to you specifically, and it fits in vaginally. Um, and you can insert it and remove it, and it just gives you support and a lift. If it's fit correctly, women love it. So again, finding the right fit and seeing if that's a good option for you is another option. And then surgery. Again, surgery is, uh, is a repair of the prolapse, but don't go to surgery as your first option. Always go and see a pelvic floor physical therapist. A lot of women have received the results and the progress and the strength that they need just through seeing the pelvic floor physical therapist. If you do pursue surgery, knowing that you have strengthened and coordinated this pelvic floor muscles and you're not just putting a band-aid by a surgery, you're actually working on the structure here, working it with surgery 
and coordination of the pelvic floor muscles in the optimal ideal position so that you know how to work this. Control your intra-abdominal pressure is so, so important. So as a review, if you're feeling this pressure, it could be a pelvic organ prolapse. Seeing your provider, which could include your urologist, your gynecologist, or your PET, is so, so important. I'm glad that you've taken one simple step today towards your healing and your health and your freedom. If you have any questions, make sure that you drop them down below. Or if you want to connect with me, my link to my website's down below as well. One simple step dot today. I would love to chat with you and answer any questions. Have a great day.